But people here throughout the Capital Region are reflecting today on the life and legacy of Mario Cuomo. He lived in Albany while serving as governor and made many friends along the way. And our Kimberly Howard is live in our Capital Newsroom now. And Kimberly, I know you spoke today with a longtime friend of the former governor, a tailor. Yeah, Liz, one who has a shop right across the street from the Capitol. He's been in Albany for 50 years now, but he holds strong to his Italian roots, something that made Mario Cuomo, at least to him, so likable. Just a stone's throw from the hub of state government, a longtime Albany business run by former Governor Mario Cuomo's longtime friend. Very close friend. He was a very good friend to me. Come here once in a while. He likes to speak Italian with me. Cuomo was the son of Italian immigrants, and Joe Amore is an Italian immigrant himself. You might say it's a friendship that was tailor made. Sometimes he likes to sing, sing a song in Italian song. Amore opened his shop in the 1960s, and he'll never forget when the state's first ever Italian American governor waltz right in. When the governor walks into your store, what do you think? <laughs> I pull around with him and I say, What the hell do you want? <laughs> He wanted a suit, and with Amore's help, he got it. I think I make a four or five suit. Including this one. Cuomo wore while delivering his now iconic speech at the Democratic National Convention in San Francisco. Maybe, Mr. President, if you asked a woman who had been denied the help she needed to feed her children because you said you needed the money for a tax break for a millionaire or for a missile we couldn't afford to use. It's a speech that catapulted him to national prominence. While he impacted people throughout the country as a liberal powerhouse, those who knew Cuomo say he never forgot his roots. Politicians are politicians. They talk about person. He was a wonderful guy. He was a wonderful guy to me. I think everybody misses him. I think everybody going to miss him. And not only did Mario Cuomo gain respect from Italian Americans, but from Catholics too. He often attended church right in Albany and would sit in the pews amongst the parishioners. Coming up at six, we'll hear from some religious leaders on Cuomo's legacy. For now, we're live in the Albany newsroom. Kimberly Howard, CBS 6 News. Thank you, Kimberly. Well, those of us reporters lucky enough to have covered Mario Cuomo during his years at the Capitol knew a complex politician who was filled with passion and fire, ambition and ambivalence. But we also knew another side to this political icon, the fun-loving family man who lived on Eagle Street, who shot hoops in the South End, and who had clerked in his younger days at the Court of Appeals. Mario Cuomo had a very long history with the city of Albany. He's in the office of governor of the state of New York, of governor of the state of New York. So help me God. So help me God. It's not exactly the beginning of Mario Cuomo's legacy in Albany. It's just when most New Yorkers started noticing. January 1983, Hugh Carey's former lieutenant governor was sworn in as the 52nd governor of the state of New York. You have to go all the way back to 1956 to find Mario Cuomo setting up shop in Albany. He had graduated top of his class at St. John's University Law School and was then spending weekdays as a clerk here at the Court of Appeals, making $4,800 a year, living very modestly here at Albany's Wellington Hotel. Law school had been a fallback position for Cuomo. In 1952, he had signed as an outfielder with the Pittsburgh Pirates for a $2,000 bonus. Something I remember him joking was more than Mickey Mantle got when he signed. Cuomo played minor league ball until he was beaned by a pitch, but the athlete never left. Years later, as governor, you could still find him playing pickup basketball in Albany's South End. His political career was initially marked by failure. He lost his first bid to become lieutenant governor and then tried twice and lost twice to arch rival Ed Koch for New York City mayor. What a delicious moment then to pull off a stunning upset over Koch in the 1982 election. And once Mario Cuomo arrived at the executive mansion, he really arrived. It didn't take long for this brilliant overachiever to widen his reach to a national audience. And the president is right. The 1984 Democratic Convention keynote address, Cuomo, the brilliant orator, counters Ronald Reagan's shining city on the hill much. speech with his own tale of two cities. In many ways, we are a shining city on a hill. But the hard truth is that not everyone is sharing in this city's splendor and glory. That speech raised Mario Cuomo's national profile and led to the biggest question mark of his political career seven years later. Would he or wouldn't he? He held court with reporters at the Red Room the night before he had to decide, reporters asking him to give odds on his chances of running. I don't bet. I would suggest to people, don't bet. 
His ambivalence about running earned him the nickname Hamlet on the Hudson. It was one of those often contentious political battles that the governor became embroiled in that had set up the Mario scenario, as reporters called it. He refused to commit to running for president because the state legislature would not come to terms with him on a budget. In the end, despite having a plane gassed up on the Albany runway to take him to New Hampshire, Cuomo chose to pass up the political chance of a lifetime. But it seems to me I cannot turn my attention to New Hampshire while this threat hangs over the head of the New Yorkers that I've sworn to put first. But I would be less than honest if I did not admit to you my regret at not having the chance to run for president. In 1994, Mario Cuomo tried for a fourth term as governor and was himself upset by George Pataki. The Mario Cuomo legacy in Albany had ended when, 16 years later, another Cuomo, his son Andrew, followed in his footsteps. Mario Cuomo was here again. He would make several trips to Albany in recent years. I emceed his keynote address for the FBI Albany Bureau's 100th anniversary. He had lost none of his magic touch with words or his fiery passion and more recently appeared in Saratoga to support his wife Matilda's special charity, the Mental Health Foundation. That same year, 2012, Mario Cuomo set up permanent residence in Albany when his son surprised him with a portrait of the 52nd governor, which hangs proudly today in the Hall of Governors. I can't think of anyone I've covered in my long career who kept me more on my toes. He was an exacting interview while still being both gracious and generous. I can remember watching those great national speeches of his and being so proud as a New Yorker of his ability to paint not just a picture but a masterpiece with his words. And the very kind words he sent my way will stay with me for the rest of my life. We have complete coverage.